So if I was a Jaguars, I would take Evan Neal out of Alabama. Now, Peter King this morning in his uh, weekly NFL column did his own little mock draft, and he said, according to his sources, expect a surprise from the Jaguars at number one. For the most part, the one consensus thought at number one was Aiden Hutchinson to the Jaguars. But again, as you get closer, you're starting to hear more and more rumbles of Trayvon Walker, or uh, Trayvon Walker, Iki Aquanu out of NC State. I'm going to go with Evan Neal here if I was the Jaguars, if I was Trent Baalke at number one. Because your first and major priority for this team is keeping Trevor Lawrence upright. Now, I understand he wasn't sacked anywhere near, you know, Joe Burrow levels, I'd say. He was only sacked, we say only, 32 times last year. That was 14th most in the NFL. So the Jaguars did a decent job at protecting Trevor Lawrence. But this is my thought here. You can never have enough protection in front of him. You can't. You can never have too many good offensive linemen on your roster. And even though you have Cam Robinson and Juwan Taylor as your two tackles on the outside, let me ask you this question. Do you really feel great about those two protecting Trevor Lawrence? I don't. So you can only use more help, not to mention if they do, let's say in camp, continue to play well and they do show you, hey, you know what? You do feel good about your left and your right tackle. Well, the good news is Evan Neal has played multiple positions. He's played left tackle. He's played right tackle. He's played guard. So guess what? He is versatile. He can basically plug and play wherever you need him. So if you're the Jaguars, really the best case scenario is that Cam Robinson continues to develop, Jawan Taylor continues to develop, and you can plug Evan Neal in at left or right guard and have your offensive line for three to the five positions be really solid. Take Evan Neal, help give Trevor Lawrence even more time because the more time he has to throw, the more he'll be able to find his receivers and the better he'll develop because he won't be fearing the rush like so many young quarterbacks do when they're on bad teams and just getting the pulp beat out of them. Evan Neal, number one overall pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I will go with an Aiden Hutchinson number two. Lions, it's a win-win here. You get a pass rusher, which they have not had in a while, and you also get a local kid. Playing at the University of Michigan, every fan base always loves when you take the local kid here. It's a win-win for Detroit. You have some good vibes coming for the Lions fans. And not to mention, you get some much-needed help in a, in a spot on your roster that is severely lacking. The Lions as a team last year had 30 sacks on the season, third fewest in the NFL. They struggle getting after the quarterback. They struggle, you know, getting consistent pressure at all. Get Aiden Hutchinson. Get yourself a defensive end who can get constant pressure, who can tackle the quarterback, who can, again, when you're in a division with Aaron Rodgers and Kirk Cousins, give your defense a chance. Give your defense a chance. You, you know, you took... Um, or you, you at least have gone defense in the past few years Detroit has. Now give yourself a chance to give some of those uh, defensive backs a chance here by getting and speeding up the quarterback process. You do that by getting Aiden Hutchinson, number two overall. And the Texans at three should take Icky Aquanu, tackle out of NC State. Houston, look, they need help everywhere, right? They are just like the Lions and just like the... Um, the Jaguars, they need help at a lot of different positions. But they especially need help at offensive line. Right, if they want to give um, Mills a chance here to actually have success, they're going to give him the job. They're going to say, Davis Mills, at least for 2022, show us what you got. So if you actually want to give Davis Mills a legit shot here to win the starting job and maybe, maybe be your starter going forward past just 2022, well, one of the ways you got to give him a chance here is by giving him time to throw the ball. The Texans do not have a very good offensive line. Get Ike Kwanu at a very important position. Um, we know Laramie Tunsil is older. So again, how were the Texans in a rebuild? If you look at a two to three year window for them to try to get young players and try to turn the team around where you're going from rebuild mode to compete mode. Well, in that two to three year stretch here, you're going to have Laramie Tunsil who's older and going to be still very highly paid. So he could be a good trade piece you use either this year or next year to move off, get Ike Kwanu in there. He'll be there through the end of the rebuild, and he should be your bookend left tackle for a decade. So if you want to give Davis Mills a chance, the only way to do so is to give him more time to throw. Get Ike Kwanu to be your, even if he doesn't play the left tackle this year, you slide him over to the right side, you eventually can feel good that once you trade Laramie Tunsil, um, that you will have a real you know left tackle there for a decade, a cornerstone player that you could build around and you didn't overpay for like the Texans did when they traded two first-round picks from Larry Tunsil and then also overpaid him and gave him a way higher salary than his production called for. This is a good pick, I think, for the Texans to start building your offensive line and give Davis Mills a shot here.